Welcome back to HRNHQ. Ed DeRosa joined by Tom Law. And Tom, it was 18 years ago that we did feature race analysis. Wow. That's a good stat. That's, cool. That's nice. hard to believe. It's like old times here, though. And 19 years ago, I gave out Lisa Lewis on the radio. So we're going to try to do a little better now. And I think you told me she actually does some stuff in your sphere. Yeah, she's around. She's uh, she's um, still training horses some. And I see her uh, occasionally in the summers up in Saratoga. Here and there, she's uh, she's around. So. Right. Well, I couldn't get Kiss Insane home in the 03 Preakness, but <sighs> we'll try to get something going here in the Claiming Crown Jewel. One of several big money states for starter allowance types. And before we get to the feature, if you want to call it that, 175000 I'm pumped that Beverly Park is running again. And that's really part of what Claiming Crown is all about. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you know, the Claiming Crown, eight races. It's they're coming from all over the country. When you look at the when you look at the card, it's uh, I've been going over it for a couple of days now. It's <laughs> tough to pick winners. No, but that's you part know, of the fun though. It is really part right. of the reward. Yeah, the uh, the jewel, mm-hmm. which is race ten, nine pro ones on the dirt, ten horses, five different tracks are coming from. And this time of year at Churchill, typically you see Keeneland or horses who have already run at Churchill, maybe a little Ellis, Horseshoe, Kentucky Downs. For the most part, they're all locals. Not the case with claiming. No, I mean they're coming from the Maryland Million. You have a twelve volt man. It's a, a twelve volt man's the defending champ in the race who won it at Gulfstream last time, and then uh, Our Nation on Parade. He won it the Maryland Million last time mm. from Jamie Ness. So it's coming from Laurel. Big Another price. one. Yeah, and big, then, big yeah. money earners for, for sure. Terms. For sure. Intrepid Heart of course is a Churchill horse. So there are some Churchill horses. You know, I, I always try to factor that in my handicap <laughs> horses that do well. Uh, over the track or have done well over the track, especially recently. You know? um, and then you have, you know, a horse like uh, Benna Vengo. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but nah, the one. Go, yeah, the one horse. <laughs> you go two starts back, he's running in the Haskell. I mean, so, you know, the claiming crown isn't necessarily, you know, what you think. Like, oh, it's just a bunch of claimers. I mean, a lot of these horses are stakes horses. The first, uh, the first stakes on the card is the five and a half row on the turf race. It's uh, mm-hmm. Tom Metzen. Uh, Memorial, almost all the horses are coming out of like graded turf sprints. Uh, some of them had run against, you know, Golden Pal and, and horses like that. So coming out, of, a lot of them are coming from the races here in Kentucky. And turf sprints, uh, definitely uh, much more prevalent than they were 18 years ago yeah. when we were doing uh, feature race analysis. Now, interestingly enough, the last time I actually went to the Claiming Crown, I was with you. And we went to Ellis at Park. At the Patch. At the Patch. It was my first time ever going to Ellis Park. Wow. Yeah. Oh, Coincidentally, six? it might be the last time I went to Ellis Park. <laughs> or maybe <laughs> not coincidentally. Yeah, uh, but uh, yeah. Under new management. Though. I think it was 06. Yeah. We had a great day. I mean, I remember sitting up in the dining room there with you. Yeah. And handicap in the race. It was very Long in after. Yeah. yeah oh, that's a good yeah. trip. That was a good eat. <laughs> yeah, for sure. All day. Yeah. yeah. Well, I like a bomb. Mm. In the big race, uh, I think Frosted Grace. Now I said we wouldn't look at the pace scenario, so I'm not going to bore you. But there's speed yeah. in here. Yeah. There's closers, and when I feel like you got horses all over the track, front and back, I think pressers actually have. I don't want to say advantage, but I don't discount them by any means. I don't necessarily look for a closer just because there's a lot of speed. And I think Frosted Grace, you get the local jock. Mm-hmm. Horse hasn't won at Churchill, does have two seconds, though. Don't think the uh, the nine furlongs will be an issue being out of a Thunder Gulch mare, and I feel like at this level it's kind of mitigated anyway. At 20 to 1, yeah. I'm going to take a shot that Chris can get first run on the rest. Well, Robertino Diodoro uh, takes over the training. Yes. He does well <laughs> there at Churchill. Yes. You might not get 20, but you might. Mm-hmm. I mean, he comes out of a nice Ten horse field. That's that's true. That helps. Yeah. And, and some, you know, more name type horses, the horses right. I mentioned the, Defending champion here as well as the Maryland Million winner. Uh, Intrepid Heart, obviously, is going to be the favorite. He's he's five to two favorite. Yes. He's run well at Churchill. You know, Joe Sharp looks like he's got a pretty loaded hand for uh, some of the other races on the card as well. But yeah, Tyler. Tyler Grace, you might get a good price in here. I'm hoping. I actually, uh, another local, Tommy Vanberg, to his mm-hmm. right time, uh, that would be one maybe more needs a lot to happen up front. But another one I think will be the right price. This is. Super compelling. Race. He's got two. Yeah, Tom. Tom Does he? Here. No, I just He's threw it in on the one I like. Uh, Tis right time <laughs> and the eight. Decision. Oh, okay. Well, I, I prefer the longer price on the morning line. We'll see if that yeah. actually comes to fruition. But, yeah. uh, well, I'm picking 12-volt man. 
All right. Uh, that's uh, Sappy Joseph's horse. Sappy's got a lot of horses uh, entered on the card. Uh, it's obviously a guy that does really well at Gulfstream. Yeah. Maybe he wishes it, it was back at Gulfstream <laughs> this year, uh, but it's not. Uh, this is a horse that ran in the you know the Ghost Sapper Grade Three race two starts back, way back in April. He hasn't run since uh, the end of August uh, down at Gulfstream, uh, and it was a win that day. You know, got the dub. That's right. And he is the defending. He is the defending champ. He, is, yeah. he was ten to one last year in the race. He's eight to one on the morning line. So he's gonna take a shot. Now this little twelve volt man. I mean, I one of those races. Like, do you really want the short price? Not that they can't win, no. but uh, and I did not look. It's the turf race that ends the car of the eleventh. I don't know how deep that is, but I'm hoping yeah. I, these this late sequence I think will pay. Yeah. Well, that's the emerald. Claiming Crown Emerald on the grass, the two-turn race. On okay. The grass. Yeah. Hopefully Mike, the weather cooperates. One guy we haven't mentioned, I don't think he has a horse in the Classic, was Mike Maker. He's oh, okay. he's the all-time uh, leading trainer in Claiming Crown history. He has a horse in there named One Night Standards that I like. I, think I like the name. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good name. <laughs> clever. clever name for sure. And then Sappy Joseph's got another one in there named Freedom Matters. So that's pretty good. Is it by Tappet or Into Mischief? Uh, that I'm not sure. I don't have my PPs in front. That would seem to be a name that could go with one night stand. For sure, yeah. There's probably some others. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Panty raid. Yeah, panty raid. It's, <laughs> there's, there's a. Out of. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But Beverly Park. I mean. Yeah. Twelve wins. That's in the Reddy's Rocket Express. <laughs> I like the names that they came up with for the clinic. Do they? Are they just old warriors or old winners? Sometimes, yeah. I think like Reddy's Rocket. I mean, obviously the jewel is the jewel and the tiara, the tiara, and then the Reddy's Kent, Rocket, Kent Sterling, Asmussen, uh, maybe Fletcher. Sure. I can picture the horse, but yeah. the glass slipper the warriors. That's a good race. Yeah, yeah. And when it, you're doing notes, you're covering it for HPPA? Yeah, notes. yeah so uh, we do all the editorial now for the Horseman's Journal, which is the National HPPA's uh, quarterly publication. So this is uh, their event with uh, Toba, mm -hmm. uh, HPPA. So uh, I'll be out there, yeah, covering the races. Mm -hmm. It'll be in the winter edition, which will come out just right around the end of the year, uh, probably in the, in the mail shortly after the start of the new year. So it should be fun. And for those local, HRN is teaming with the University of Louisville. We have a speakers panel after the races and we have the starting gate suite. So for those who want to come out, if you're here, uh, we would welcome the hospitality. Uh, shoot me an email, my contact info. It's on HRN or leave a comment. We'll uh, we'll get you some tickets to the claiming ground. Nice. If you need any extra speakers, I'm, I'm available mm -hmm. for some of the day. Really? Well, I've never had after the order. races. Yeah. Okay. Are you scooting or are you set? No, I'll be around. All right. Well, I have you in for a cold one. Nice. That sounds good. Yeah. I'll need one. <laughs> yeah. Although it's, it's uh, going to be pretty cold from the sounds of it. Well, beer coat. Yeah. But 11 races, it's it's a card. It is. Yeah. And uh, gets dark, so that this one might actually be under the lights, let yeah. alone the turf. Yeah, the last two, yeah. Should be fun. Veterans Day Friday and Saturday's the Claiming Crown. Big weekend to Churchill Town. Great to have you here in the office. Thanks for having me. Old times. Fun. Yeah. All right, this is Horse Racing and Horse Racing Nation. Hopefully gave you a winner between all those horses we talked about. Great card at Churchill. Good luck.